Hi everybody, my name is Scott and I'm a Southpaw. And that's why I have two mice here, because they're both the latest candidates in my search for a good left-handed mouse. I've been using a mouse like this one for about 15 years now. It's a Microsoft Optical mouse. It's very reliable and comfortable in either hand, and of course it has the left click button on the left side and the right on the right, like you'd expect. But the right button started to fail and they don't make it anymore, so I surveyed Amazon and Newegg for my options. Good quality left-handed mice that fit my hand aren't easy to come by. I don't have huge hands, but they're probably bigger than average, and so not only was I looking for an ergonomic mouse, but also one that's a bit on the larger side. Enter the Razer Death Adder left-handed edition. It's just about the perfect size for me, being very similar to the MS mouse. Its slight contour makes it really comfortable, and it's very precise and quick as well. However, always having used right-handed mice in my left hand, I wasn't aware that the buttons are swapped on left-handed mice. In other words, left click is the right button, and vice versa for right click. That seems stupid to me, but I guess people tend to go by finger and not by click. Having been disappointed by that, I mean getting used to reverse mouse buttons isn't easy, I decided to give the Razer Taipan a try. It's billed as an ambidextrous mouse, being horizontally symmetrical and having buttons on both sides. It's a nice enough mouse, but it's not a good fit for my hand. My pinky and ring finger don't have anywhere to sit due to the convex shape of the sides. Plus, it glows green instead of blue. Now, I'm not huge on appearances, but the green just isn't my bag. I'm not going to make this a full review of these mice, but here's a quick example of what they look like plugged in. I think the Death Adder looks a lot cooler. But hey, it's totally a matter of personal preference, and that's just mine. Not wanting to buy yet more mice, I figured I'd try and hard swap the left and right buttons on the Death Adder. By the way, I know you can swap the two buttons in software on Windows and most other operating systems. The problem I found was that in a remote desktop session, the buttons do not follow the client, but rather the remote host. This means that I'd have to swap the buttons on each remote server. Since I manage many, many servers across multiple domains, I can't use the same user profile on all of them, and even if I could, my right-handed mouse at work would then be reversed. So for me, changing the hardware is really the only viable option. Anyway, as you just saw, opening the mouse was easy. Three screws was all it took, and I did manage to mangle one of the foot pads in my haste. Ah oh well. Inside, there's a control and sensor circuit board on the bottom, and a board on the top half that's just for marshalling the various buttons and scroll wheel sensor. I inferred that therefore the right and left buttons would simply close a circuit on two respective wires on that grey ribbon cable, which connects the two halves. It was a bit of a pain getting the board loose. I mean, the six screws were easy enough to take out, but it's held on by clips at one end, and though it doesn't clip on the other end, it was fitted very tightly, and so at first I thought it was. I didn't want to break it with too much force, but if you're attempting this, just wiggle it around and it should come out. I ended up prying the clips back, but when I went to reassemble it, that turned out to be unnecessary. Aside from the ribbon cable, there's a red and white wire which powers the decorative LED under the Razer logo. You can always leave it disconnected when you reassemble everything if you find the LED to be distracting or gaudy. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but I ended up reconnecting it anyhow. With my multimeter set to continuity mode, I probed each of the connections on the ribbon cable. I guessed that there would be a common wire on one end or the other, and just by chance happened to pick the correct end on my first try. As the probe was touching each terminal, I pressed one of the mouse buttons to see if continuity resulted. After going down the line and doing a bit of digital acrobatics, I found the pin that was connected to one of the buttons. Fortunately and logically, the next pin over was for the other button, which I tested in the same way. I labeled one button's position on the board with red marker and the other with blue. In retrospect, I suppose that marking it isn't strictly needed because this project just involves swapping two wires and there's really not much to mess up in that regard. But hey, being overly anal about this type of thing doesn't really hurt. Next, I liberated the two buttons wires using a utility knife, slicing through the ribbon cable. If you're attempting this, you may want to use a finer blade than I did, like an X-Acto knife. Or at least have a cooler hand than me because my cuts were a bit sloppy. I did avoid nicking either conductor. I mean, be very careful about that, though at worst case you could just replace the ruined wire with a jumper if that happened and you'd be fine. I ended up labeling the common wire and the buttons wires as well, which again isn't particularly necessary. With my trusty soldering iron heated up, I desoldered each of the two conductors. I used a small pocket knife woven behind the cable to pre-tension it so that it would easily pop out of the through hole when the solder melted. I then did the same thing to the other wire and was able to cross them over. Luckily, the connections are quite close to each other, and so the wires reach them just fine. Ideally, I would have removed the old solder from the pads using a desoldering wick. Unfortunately, I'd left that at the office, and so just reused the existing solder plus a bit extra. 
That makes sticking the wires back into the holes a bit more difficult and doesn't make for an ideal joint. However, since this is a mouse and not a Mars lander, a bad solder joint doesn't make for a disaster. But if you're doing this, you should desolder the pads properly. I mean, if you want. Anyways, with the wires crossed over and reconnected, I tested the mouse before closing it up. Always test things before closing them. Trust me, I've had to reopen devices numerous times due to my own hubris. It becomes a pain in the ass. So, as you can see, it's a bit awkward to use a mouse in this state, but the old switcheroo worked. The left button is now the left button, and the right is the right. As it should be, in my humble opinion. There was nothing earth-shatteringly interesting about the reassembly, so here it is in fast motion. The only thing that might suck is the foot pads. I pressed them into place using the existing adhesive, and so far they've been hanging on just fine, but eventually I have a feeling they're going to fall off. So unlike me, be extra careful when removing them, and at worst, if you get a sloppy result, clean off the old adhesive and apply new stuff. I'd recommend the 3M contact adhesive in a can. Spray it on a piece of wax paper or aluminum foil or some other crap, and then dab it onto the mouse and the back of the pads respectively, because trying to spray it directly onto those things will probably just make a huge mess. With everything back together, here's one more test on my not-so-trusty Chuwei tablet. Everything works fine, and I'm completely happy with the result. So, as a symbolic gesture, here's some tape to cover the design for left-handers part of the box. I mean, ergonomically, it's still a lefty mouse, but whatever. The fact that that's the default button arrangement is still weird to me, because I can't be the only one with this problem. I gotta imagine that most left-handed people grew up using a right-handed mouse, with a left-left click and a right-right click. So it surprised me that this mouse had the buttons the other way around. If I could make one suggestion slash request to Razer and other mouse companies, it would be to include a switch on the bottom that would swap the two buttons, and that way everyone would be happy. It seems like it'd be pretty easy to do, and I can't imagine that people would balk at spending an extra dollar or two for that feature if that's what it cost. Plus it'd mean that we wouldn't have to void our warranties to make this mod. I know I put a disclaimer about that at the beginning, but in case you skipped over that part, keep in mind that this almost certainly voids your warranty. Then again, if you're the type of person that's willing to make this mod in the first place, I'm guessing you'd probably just repair the mouse yourself anyway. I hope this video helped out my fellow lefties a bit. With this modification, I would absolutely recommend the Death Adder. It's a great mouse at its price point, and very comfortable for those of you with larger hands, or who just like a larger mouse. For future updates and a brief story about my not-so-hot experience with Razer's support, check out my blog at s.co.tt. Thanks for watching, and consider subscribing for other random how-tos and product reviews. Hey, that rhymes, I think.